So it's Dr. Omende and this time we'll do um, a brief discussion on the embryology, introduction to embryology basically. So you need to understand that um, we have the gametogenesis and what is gametogenesis? It's the process by which you form and develop gametes from primordial germ cells. So the formation and development of gametes from primordial germ cells is gametogenesis. This includes meiosis and cytodifferentiation. So when you, the cells undergoes differentiation, it's cytodifferentiation. So we have two types of gametogenesis, spermatogenesis in males and oogenesis in females. Spermatogenesis, what is spermatogenesis? It is a sequence of events in which spermatogonia are usually transformed into spermatozoa. So spermatogonia to spermatozoa. This begins at puberty and takes approximately 64 days. Which hormones regulate spermatogenesis? Luteinizing hormone, follicular stimulating hormone, and these are from the, um, the um, pituitary gland. And then you also have the testosterone. So these are the hormones that regulate spermatogenesis. So this is just the histology of the testes. It is made up of um, lobules, which contain seminiferous tubules, and these tubules contain cells of the spermatogenic series. So from spermatogonia at the ages, and as you come towards the lumen, you have your matured spermatids. You can see they start gaining tails, the sperms start gaining tails within the lumen. So these are immature and they mature towards the lumen. The connective tissue in between the seminiferous tubule, this is one seminiferous tubule, this is the next. This connective tissue contains interstitial cells of lady and these are the cells that produce testosterone. Okay, So the seminiferous tubules have cells of the spermatogenic series as well as um, Sertoli cells which are cells that will support the sperm cells. So what are the phases? We have spermatogenesis contains um, five phases, spermatocytogenesis, meiosis, spermiogenesis, spermiation, and capacitation. So you need to be able to um, explain all this. So what is spermatocytogenesis? When spermatogonia are able to undergo changes after several mitotic divisions, that's what we call spermatocytogenesis so it's the initial mitosis okay so spermatogonia undergoing mitosis to primary spermatocyte spermatogonia undergoing changes mitotic division to form primary spermatocyte that is what you call spermatocytogenesis after spermatocytogenesis what happens meiosis so we have first meiotic division to give us two um, resultant secondary spermatocytes and then second meiotic division from each, you have two um, re uh, resultant uh, cells. And therefore, that means one uh, gives you four daughter cells after the first and second meiosis. So again, spermatogonium undergoing mitosis, that's spermatocytogenesis. So you form your primary spermatocyte, which undergoes first meiotic division, you get two secondary spermatocytes. These undergo second meiotic division, then you get your spermatids, and spermatids undergo changes to form your sperm. So mitosis to primary spermatocyte, first meiosis to secondary spermatocyte, second meiosis, you get two from each, so you end up with four daughter cells to get your spermatid, and then this mature and undergo some changes and transformation to form a sperm, which has a head, a middle piece with mitochondria, and a tail. So what is Spermiogenesis. The first one was spermocytogenesis, uh, mitosis. Spermiogenesis now comes in after the meiosis. It's a series of transformational changes in which spermatids undergo to form spermatozoa. That is spermiogenesis. So you start with spermatocytogenesis, meiosis 1, meiosis 2, before spermio, uh, you get to spermiogenesis, where the spermatids undergo transformational changes to spermatozoa. What are these changes? The acrosome is able to form from the Golgi apparatus. The nucleus condenses to form the head. And you now gain the neck, the middle piece, and the tail. And the middle piece, you have the mitochondria gathering at the middle piece. And the cell sheds most of the cytoplasm. So this 
uh, is the spermiogenesis. Golgi apparatus come to the anterior pole and form the acrosome. The nucleus will condense. Okay, then you lose a lot of cytoplasm. You now develop a head, the middle piece with mitochondria gathering and the tail. And you can see you're still losing excess cytoplasm. So you end up with a head, middle piece and a tail. What is permeation? Permeation is when mature spermatids are released from the Sertoli cell into the lumen of seminiferous tubules before passing into the epididymis. So when you release, Sertoli cells now release mature spermatid into the lumen, you have spermiation. So basically, spermiation occurs before spermiogenesis. Okay, so spermatocytogenesis, that's the first mitosis to form primary spermatocytes which undergo second, um, a first meiotic division. Okay, so we are here. Um, sorry, sorry. So I'll just go back so that we are able to understand that. Okay, so spermatogonium undergoes spermatocytogenesis, which is mitosis to form primary spermatocyte. First meiotic division to form two daughter cells. Second meiotic divisions from each to form four daughter cells. From here, the spermatids undergo spermiation where they are released into the lumen. So that's where we are. So we undergo spermiation where you release mature spermatids into the lumen. And then within the lumen, they now undergo spermiogenesis where they have a series of these changes. Acrosome is formed, nucleus condenses. You have the head, neck, middle piece, and tail form and you shed cytoplasm. So that is spermiogenesis. So spermiation occurs before spermiogenesis. So this is spermiation. You now release from the edges of seminiferous tubules, they mature towards the lumen. So you release, the totally cells release them before they undergo spermiogenesis. So you release them to the lumen. And this is how you have your acrosome there. You have your head where the nucleus has condensed and then the middle piece with the mitochondria, and that's the uh, principal piece, okay, where you have your, your um, tail has a principal piece and an end piece. So those are the parts, the head, acrosome, head with the nucleus and acrosome at the tip, you have your neck there, the middle piece with mitochondria, the principal piece and the end piece. So where do the um, sperms mature? Yeah. So freshly ejaculated uh, sperms are unable to fertilize an oocyte. Freshly ejaculated will not fertilize an oocyte. They have to undergo conditioning, and this is called capacitation. Capacitation usually occurs in the female reproductive tract and lasts seven hours. So what three things are involved in capacitation? You remove the glycoprotein coat and seminal proteins, and that makes it active. And this really occurs in the uterus and the fallopian tube. So those are well, the features of capacitation, it takes seven hours. So we go to oogenesis. Oogenesis is where oogonia are transformed into mature oocytes. It begins before birth and completed after puberty. So oogonia undergo a series of mitotic division and are arranged in clusters surrounded by follicular cells by the end of the third month. So in the prenatal period, they enlarge to form primary oocyte. Primary oocyte contains one layer uh, is housed within one layer of follicular cells. So this is before birth. And that will be now be called a primordial follicle. So before birth, primary oocyte is in a primordial follicle and it will be ar 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 arrested at prophase 1. So they remain dormant in the ovarian follicle until puberty. So arrested at prophase 1 of the first meiotic division. Then after birth, postnatally, what happens? In, uh, during puberty, primary follicle forms and there's a presence of zona pellucida. So one follicle matures each month and ovulation occurs. So remember, prenatally, we arrested at prophys. So when ovulation occurs, first meiotic division is completed just before ovulation. And that gives rise to a secondary oocyte and the first polar body. So first meiotic division gives a secondary oocyte and first polar body gives us secondary oocyte and first polar body. So that's the product of first meiotic division. Secondary oocyte and first polar body. And these are your follicular cells. This is the glycoprotein, the zona pellucida that separates follicular cells from the oocyte. So that's um, 
genesis occurring. So then we also have an equal division of the cytoplasm. So at ovulation, before ovulation, first um, meiotic division that was arrested in prophase is completed. You form your secondary oocyte, and this secondary oocyte immediately begins second meiotic division. However, this is arrested at metaphase 2. Okay, so it remains like that. If a sperm now penetrates this uh, released oocyte, uh, if it penetrates, then this second meiotic division will be completed. Okay, so if a sperm penetrates this secondary oocyte, then the second meiotic division will be completed. So this is what happens. A primordial oocyte in the primordial follicle, okay, then it will undergo um, first meiosis, which will be arrested at prophase 1 prenatally. So until you are born, then you get to puberty when ovulation begins. Just before ovulation, first meiotic division is completed. You form a primary oocyte and a first polar body. Then you begin, um, uh, you form, uh, sorry, we had arrested at prophes. So before ovulation, this first meiotic division now is completed. You get your um, oocyte and first polar body. Then you start meiosis 2. Meiosis 2 will be arrested at metaphase until when a sperm comes to penetrate. Then you're able to complete meiosis 2, second meiotic division. So this is it. Ugonium undergoes mitosis. Okay, this ugonium is within follicular cells. So with, before birth is within a primordial follicle. So just surrounded by one layer of follicular cells. So ugonium undergoes mitosis to form a primary oocyte. So primary oocyte is in here and it continues to grow. Then it undergoes meiosis 1, but this meiosis 1 of this ugonium is arrested at prophes 1. Then it remains inactive after birth during childhood until at puberty when ovulation occurs. So from childhood till puberty, primordial follicle becomes primary follicle, it grows, it develops species filled with lyca, so you form a graphene follicle. So at puberty, ovulation occurs. So just before ovulation, meiosis 1 that was arrested in prophes 1 is completed. So when you complete meiosis 1, what forms? You form your first polar body and a primary and a secondary oocyte. Okay? You form first polar body and a secondary oocyte. We formed primary oocyte here and arrested at prophes 1. But second meiotic division is completed. First meiotic division is completed just before ovulation and you form first polar body and uh, secondary oocyte. Then when a sperm now comes to penetrate this secondary oocyte, what happens? Um, after ovulation, first polar body and secondary oocyte were formed and it uh, started meiosis 2, which was arrested at metaphase 2. So it sits at metaphase 2, remains arrested and waits for a sperm. When a sperm now comes to penetrate, meiosis 2 is completed. So you form um, first polar body undergoes meiosis. You have those two polar bodies from it and the um, secondary oocyte undergoes meiosis 2. It completes from metaphase 1, so you complete it and you have your second polar body and the ovum. So that's just it. You have your primary oocyte, developing oocyte, you get your graphene follicle, and then so at ovulation, you complete meiosis 1. At uh, fertilization, you complete meiosis 2 that will have been arrested at metaphase 2. So this is just a mature graphene follicle to show you the parts. So you have primulas before us here. You have corona radiata cells, follicular cells around the oocyte. This is the thick glycoprotein zona pellucidum. This is your oocyte. These are the follicular cells. You have your thicker interna and thicker externa. This is the antrum that is filled with fluid. So how do you compare male and female gametes? The female one, of course, is bigger. The male is more motile. The female has more cytoplasm. The male is generally supported by uh, Sertoli cells, female also supported by follicular cells, and the male has XY sex chromosome while the female has the XX sex chromosomes. So you need to know that uh, in prolonged maternal age, like a woman who's 45 years old, it, uh, the egg is prone to meiotic errors because of prolonged um, duration within the first meiotic division. Thank you.